Make sure you follow me on social media to get updates and ask me questions. Enjoy the video! At this point, we have a working form to register users. However, we need to make sure that the users can log in to the system. So let's create the form for login. First, let's create a route to display the form. So I will open my web.php file. I will delete the comments because we do not need them. And I will go down here. Route, get, login. Of course, we need a controller. However, it doesn't make any sense to use the registration controller for login. So what about creating a new controller? Let's do that. PHP Artisan, make controller. Login controller. Okay, so now that we have the controller, let's use this. Login controller. At login. So login is the function, of course. Let's create it. Login controller. Public function login. This will return a view. Authentication dot login. Let's create the view. Resources, views, authentication. I'll create a new file. Login.blade.php. So what I will do is to copy all the content from the register file and I will paste them inside the login. We want to keep only email, password and the button that will submit the form. So I will delete this. This and what is this one? Location. So let's delete these three here and the password confirmation. Okay. Now I will change the heading here to login, the action to login as well, and I think the name of the button also to login. So let's take a look. If I go to slash login, okay, so this looks nice. Of course, if you click to the login button, this will not work because we have no logic for that or the route. So let's start with the route first. I will go back to the web file, route, post, the URI is the same, login, the login controller, at post login. If we go back and reload, of course now it says that the method post login doesn't exist, so let's create it. Public function post login. So we want to get the data to the server. We can use the request for that. Request, request. Let's dd request all so we can see what we have. So go back and reload. And of course the email and the password are empty. So what I will do is to go back to this and I will go to the login blade file and what I will do is to go here and say required and I will do the same for the password. So we have some client side validation here to make sure that the user cannot submit the form without filling the email and the password. So let's try this. So if I press login, you get this notification here. Okay, so let's try this. Example at example.com and the password for me is secret. Now we have a value for the email and for the password. So the credentials that I used are correct. So if you go to the users, you can see here that I have a user with this email and the password of course is encrypted, but the password for me is a secret. Anyway, let's go back. So now we need a logic to log in the user instead of displaying the data that comes to the server. So what I will do is to go to the login controller, post login, and first, let me also include Sentinel. So use Sentinel is the first step. So to authenticate the user, I will say Sentinel authenticate. Then I will pass the credentials. So request all. Let's also check if the user is authenticated after we do this. So return Sentinel check. 
This line here, Sentinel check, will return the authenticated user if the user is authenticated, or it will return false if the user is not authenticated. Okay, so before I run this though, let me show you the persistences table. So we have this table here, and look what will happen once we log in. So if I go back, reload, continue, and now this will return the authenticated user because this is what this sentinel check will do and also take a look at the persistences table it added a new row here this row corresponds to the authenticated user so as you can see user with id1 is now authenticated to the system so you can see here that the email that we used corresponds to user with id1 and this is what we get here user id1 so, with this table, you can find out all the authenticated users in your system. Anyway, let's go back. So, the authentication was successful, and in the next video, we will see how we can log out the authenticated user.